All right, what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at corresponding angles, all right? Uh, in corresponding angles, basically what we're going to have is we're going to have two lines that are parallel. A and B are going to be parallel, and then we're going to have a transversal line. And we'll just call it transversal line L, all right? When we have a transversal line L that cuts through the parallel lines, notice that there, each parallel line has four angles that are formed. So there's four angles formed up here on this parallel line, and then four angles per, that are created with that one, all right? And so what you need to know about corresponding angles. So in corresponding angles, what we're going to do is we're going to pick an angle. So we're going to pick this first one. is going to be angle 1. So angle 1 is the one I'm going to choose from, okay? When I find a corresponding angle, I'm going to find an angle in the same location as 1 on the other parallel line. So here's my parallel line. Here's my transversal line. 1 is in the top left. So what I'm going to do is I need to look at the other parallel line that's cut by the transversal line and find the angle that is in the top left-hand corner. In that case, it's 5. So I would say angle 1 and angle 5, angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles. All right, so I'm going to do that again. I'm going to cover up the second one. I'm going to look at the parallel line with the transversal line. The angle in the top right-hand corner is 2. So what I need to do is I need to look at what angle is in the top right-hand corner on the other parallel line cut by the transversal line. So the one in the top right-hand corner is 6. So angle 2 and angle 6 are corresponding angles. All right. Let's do it again. I'm going to pick the one in the bottom left-hand corner. So it's 4. All right. So I need to look at the bottom left-hand corner in this one. So the bottom left-hand corner between this, tran this transversal line and parallel line is 8. So angle 4 and angle 8 are corresponding angles. Then lastly, that would leave angle 3 with the only angle left in the bottom right-hand corner, which would be angle 7. So I would say that angle 1 and 5 are corresponding, 2 and 6 are corresponding, 4 and 8 are corresponding, angle 3 and angle 7 are corresponding. What you need to understand, corresponding angles are congruent. Again, congruent means equal or the same. So I'm going to put an asterisk next to that. Corresponding angles are congruent. All right. <clears throat> Give me a second. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write in a second one. So I have another set of para, para parallel lines cut by a transversal line. We'll call this one C, we'll call this one D, and again, we'll just call this transversal line right there, L. Okay? So I have C and D, which are my parallel lines. L is my transversal line. So again, what I want to do is I want to start with my parallel line, one of my parallel lines, and the transversal line, which is right here. I'm going to start with the location, favor 9. So I'm going to take the measure of angle 9. It's in the top left-hand corner. So what I want to do is I want to look at the other parallel line with the transversal line and see what's in the top left-hand corner. So it's going to be 16. So 9 and angle 16 are corresponding. So then I look at the bot bottom left-hand corner. Angle 12 is corresponding with angle 13 because that's in the bottom left-hand corner. All right? Then I look in the top right-hand corner. I look at this one. This is angle 10. Angle 10, which one's in the top right-hand corner, is angle 15 because that, that one's the corresponding. So the only thing left is angle 11. Angle 11's corresponding angle, which is in the bottom right-hand corner, is with 14 because that's in the bottom right-hand corner. And again, corresponding angles are congruent.